Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Thursday. I'm delighted as usual to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let's thank God for a brand new day. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. Um, it's not too hot. If you get a chance, I want to encourage you to go outside, take a deep breath, and just thank God for life. David was right, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I joined the Apostle Paul as he was before King Agrippa, and he says, I think myself happy. I've decided that I'm going to be happy. That's what he said. You got to make up in your mind. You got to decide that this is the day that the Lord has made. I, a personal choice, will rejoice and be glad in it. All right, let me greet some of you. How are you, Miss Carrie? I um, hope you enjoyed your birthday. I do have a card for you. Um, how are you, um, Sister Valerie? I hope you're feeling well. Sister, Brother Henry Russell, how are you? Sister Ruby Ramsey, thank you for sending me the pictures. Your grandbaby looks absolutely beautiful. Made the pastor look good. Sister Lillian Smiley, how are you? How are all of you? Good to see you. Okay, um, allow me to give some announcements. Um, again, as I said, um, it seems that the deaf angel has hovered over our church again. So let me um, share with you the following. Um, the chair of our deacon board, Deacon William Long, lost his father. Father belonged to a church in New Jersey. However, that church is not open. So the homegoing services for his father is going to be here at the Salem Church. We're going to host and allow them to use our sanctuary and facilities. That service is going to be this Monday, this Monday, viewing from five to from five to six, and the service will start promptly at six o'clock. I, I want to encourage you to let's support our chair. He's been so helpful to so many people. He is an usher. He works with the young people. He is the chair of the deacon board. If he's needed, he's the person that sets up the video during homegoing services. And so we certainly want to be here to support him as he celebrates the life of his dad on this Monday. Also, one of our faithful, faithful mem members, Sister Pearl Watson. Sister Pearl Watson got ill over the last year or so and her family um, moved her to Pennsylvania where they are so they could be close to her and watch her and take care of her. God called her from labor to reward and that service is going to be on Friday, May the 14th. Friday, May the 14th. Viewing will be from 9 to 10 and the service will start promptly at 10 o'clock. Also, one of our faithful newer members Sister Wanda Montgomery, that was just a shock to us that she was up and about one day and then took ill, was in hospital. God called her. That service is going to be on Saturday, May the 15th. Viewing will be from 8.30 to 9, 9.30, and the service will start at 9.30 on May the 15th. So please let's pray for those that have lost loved ones. But we know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Okay, on a brighter note, Sunday. Sunday is Mother's Day. And so if you have a mother anywhere in the world, you know, I would strongly urge you, encourage you to reach out and say Happy Mother's Day to your mom. I mean, let's face it, without moms, none of us would be here. So let's say Happy Mother's Day. If you're like me and your mother has transitioned from earth to glory, then we thank God for the memories and for the wonderful things that mom taught us. So I hope that you will join us on this Sunday for our in-person worship. This is our 41st week of consecutive in-person worship. We're practicing social distancing. We're still doing all the things that we need to do to keep you safe. If you can't be here physically, then join us for our virtual service um, on this Sunday. This Sunday is Mother's Day. Pastor will be preaching. I'm looking for you, you, and you. Let me again thank those of you that helped me to celebrate my 15th anniversary as senior pastor. I want to thank you for every card, every well wish, 
every word of encouragement, every text message, every phone call, please know that from the very, very depths of me, I am so grateful. You encourage me. And as Michael Walker sometimes sings, I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. Finally, thank those of you who joined us for our Bible study on last night as we studied the book of Nehemiah. And so I hope that you will join us on Wednesdays for our Bible study. For our new members, we will be meeting virtually today at 5 o'clock. I'll send you the prompts. Join me today for our second virtual new members class. If you have joined our church and you have not been a part of the pastor's new members class, please call the church office, leave your email address and your phone number. I'll get back to you and prayerfully you can meet us when we have our next meeting. Um, but if you get to meet today even, I'd be delighted if your schedule permits to have you join me today. Of course, if that time does not work, we will figure out a time that works for you, you, and you. All right, let's move on to the to the lesson today. And the lesson today, I want to um, give a shout out and I want to pay a tribute to mothers. I want to play, pay a tribute to mothers. And, and I want to talk about the mothers that are the Proverb 31 woman. Um, I want to talk to those mothers today. And all of us have had a mom that had some of the character, characteristics or tributes um, of the Proverbs 31 mom. And as I was looking at this today, um, let's look at Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to be skipping around a bit. But number one, I want you to know that this um, chapter, this uh, pericope of scripture is written by King Lumio. And it says, as it opens in verse one, this is the saying of King Lumio um, as inspired utterances his mothers taught him. So this psalm, really, this, this proverb, these words of wisdom actually um, came from the mother of King Lumio who sat on the throne at that time. Number one, she warns her son um, to be careful of the people especially the women that he might choose um, to influence his life. It opens, listen, my son, listen, son of my womb, listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. She also was a mother that prayed for a child and God gave her one. She says, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruins kings. In other words, Choose someone good that can enhance your life, that can help you to be all that you can be. The same thing would be true for girls as they choose men to become their husband or their mates. Okay, I'm going to move down now to verse 10. The Proverbs mother or woman is priceless. He writes, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. In other words, the Proverbs mother, a woman, is one that is priceless. Her value can't even be measured in terms of priceless stones or even money and her husband can have confidence in her. She is industrious. She brings him good, not harm. All the days of her life, she selects wool and flat and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. In other words, she is industrious. She is a hardworking person. She is wise. She selects um, the cloth or the wool um, carefully to make sure that it is the best. She works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings food from afar. She will go to the ends of the earth to take care of her child. What mother does not make every sacrifice sometimes to go hungry so that her child can be fed? She provides for her family. He says, she gets up while it is still early provides food for our families and portions 
for a female servant. And then he goes on to suggest that she's an entrepreneur. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In other words, she is a hardworking person. I mean, what mother does not get up sometimes in the wee hours of the morning to make sure and so when the child gets up, the breakfast is already prepared. Things are already done. The kids that have to go to, lunch, go to school, she's packed their lunch. Their clothes are iron. Mothers work hard. And so we have to thank God for the gifts of mothers. I say on the cover of the bulletin for Mother's Day that mothers are God's gifts to us and we thank God for mothers. Let me come to close now. I'm jumping down to verse 26. A good mother, a good woman, she does not gossip. He says, she speaks with wisdom. Faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. She doesn't have time for little stuff. And when she speaks, she speaks with wisdom. And she's concerned about the entire household, that things are clean, that things are in order, that things are done properly, that children are well-mannered, that they're organized, that they're prepared. As we said in Bible study last night, prior planning prevents poor performance. And then finally, the Proverbs mother or woman is blessed. He says, her children will rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting. People can charm you, make you feel good, but they can be deceptive. Beauty will change. As we get older, we change. The way we used to walk, we can't walk. Sometimes, you know, we were all curvy and everything like that, and time brings about a change. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that our hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I want to thank God for the gift of mothers. I want to thank God for you, you, and you. And I hope that this word has been a blessing to you. All right. How are you, Sister Brenda Allen, Sister Shirley Millard, Sister Kay Warman, Sister Deborah Dunham? So good to see all of you. Sister Mary Joseph, good to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll look to meet you tomorrow at the same time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it. We say thank you. We want to pause right now and thank you for a brand new day. We want to thank you for the gift of mothers. Thank you, oh God, for those mothers that have taught us, that have sacrificed, that have allowed us to become the people that we are. We thank you for allowing us to see you in them. Thank you for those mothers that were our first prayer book, our first school teacher, our first leader, our first role model. We say thank you. Now, God bless those mothers that struggle, that strive to do all that they can to take care of their household. Continue to give them strength and help them to seek to have the characteristics of the Proverbs mother. Help them to be industrious. Help them to be providers. Help them to be entrepreneurs. But more importantly, help them to have a relationship with you. Pray for those that are bereft of spirit. We remember Deacon William Long as he appears now to say goodbye to his father. And we remember the family of Sister Pearl Watson and the family of Sister Wanda Montgomery and others that have lost loved ones. And in this COVID-19 season, we have lost so many people. And this year, there'll be an empty seat at the table. But we know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven 
cannot heal. We cast our cares upon you because you care for us. We pray for this place called Salem, that you allow us to continue to endeavor to have your word go forth with truth and with power. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you glory because our testimony is that there is no God like our God. Hear our prayer now. Incline your ear to us. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for this time together. Again, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. I look to see you on Sunday. No matter what happens, know that nothing can happen to you that you together with God cannot handle. Please know that I am praying for you. I ask that you pray for me. And we know that with prayer, we had the first wireless phone. Our forefather and mother said, I got a telephone in my bosom and I can ring it up from my heart. And you can tell Jesus what you want because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. And you're down sitting in the uprising. May he grant you a wonderful Mother's Day through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen. God bless you.